We're going. There he is. He's super antsy right now. He wants to be fed. He's on my desk just pushing everything off, putting claw holes and sticky notes. And <laughs> You are such a little monster, aren't you? The best monster, yes. Oh, oh, he's so handsome. <laughs> Casey said, greetings from upstate New York, typing with one hand because Henry has my arm pinned. Hopefully that's your cat, not your significant other. <laughs> what do you think, Chester? We are hanging out. There's no storms in Vermont. It is probably 40 degrees out. It's probably cooling down right now, but we've got a little um, heat wave this weekend, which is a good and a bad thing. I have... Uh, my annual ice cliff jumping weekend planned for this weekend. And if any of you have dug through my YouTube channel, you've probably seen those videos. Chester, what are you doing? He's trying to rip my calendar off the wall. You are being a little monster, aren't you? You know it's dinner time. You do whatever you have to to get Dad to feed you. <laughs> what are you going to do next, huh? What are you going to destroy? Oh, there he goes. Where'd you go? Uh -huh. Nope, scratching time. What are you going to do? What do you have to say? Huh? Clean the camera lens? I'll do that. I'll clean the lens. Yeah, you're so cute. Anyway, it's, um, this weekend is me and my friend's annual winter cliff jumping escapade. Except most of the snow that's not at altitude has melted. So we won't have to cut any ice, which I guess is a good thing. We won't have to spend an hour and dull a chainsaw blade, but that's half the fun is making a custom cut swimming pool and then jumping in. Um, it's looking like it's going to be like 45 degrees. So honestly, it'll be quite perfect to get sandy, as they say. You want to come up here? Come up. Boom. So that's exciting. That's going down this weekend. Get to see a lot of my friends that I haven't seen in a while, probably since this summer. People who I'm very fond of and enjoy spending time with. Because that seems to be one of the greatest joys in life, is spending quality time with the right people. Scott and Sarah, who are my fellow Vermonters, asked if I have any plans for the solar eclipse, which I do. I'm going to have some... Jesus, Chester, cut me some slack here, buddy. You are relentless. I'm going to have a little gathering on my land with probably my close friends and soak it up. It falls on a Monday, which isn't the most ideal for people that work 9 to 5s, but I think this is a worthy, worthy event to take time off from. I was ready to see Chester's... Butt walk. Oh, I'm covering the camera. Chester, ready? Come on. Hey, hey, hey. It's right here, dingus. Come on. Show him the pants. There it goes. Chonky butt. Go. <laughs> you are so cute. There you go. Um, so, yeah, definitely going to watch the solar eclipse. I'm a huge fan of the movie Apocalypto. And there's a scene where a guy is supposed to get sacrificed on top of an Aztec pyramid. And there's a solar eclipse, and it saves his life. We're not going to be sacrificing anyone on my land, but it will be cool. Right, Chester? Chester will probably be there. He's not going to know what to do. He's going to be like, what is going on? But Chester can weather any storm. He's the most resilient little man. Yes. Yeah, he's so cute. Well, that is weird. Scott and Sarah said 4 2024 will be the same day backwards. Weird. Very weird. Um, but yeah, so going cliff jumping this weekend. And that'll be awesome. It's going to be nice to get some cold water therapy. Because, quite honestly, I could use it right now. 
It's been an interesting last month. Finally, the sun has showed its face here in Vermont, which I'm so thankful for. I went on a dirt bike ride today. <laughs> I took my 110 out, my pit bike, the kid's bike, as some people say, and uh, went and hit a little local trail spot. And it was pretty much covered in ice and snow. But some people with big bikes had been riding it recently, so some of it was rutted out, which was nice. But I dumped the bike so many times, it's hard riding on ice without studded tires. But it was super fun, and it was nice to get outside and soak up some vitamin D and just be active and get into flow state, as they call it, where you're just so consumed by what you're doing. You don't really think about anything else, your problems, the world, work, just daily stressors. I find that I get that release a lot up at the land, too, when I'm working. Let's see here. I think. Tammy said, be careful, make him ramp. My friend's cat jumped off refrigerator and paralyzed him. Jesus. <clears throat> That's horrible. I do need to get a ramp. I don't like seeing him jump off the counter because I'm like, one day he's going to get old and it's probably not good for his his joints. But um, he also did used to like climb 30 feet into trees and jump off the roof of the... Uh, old trailer. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll build a ramp. There's only so much you can do. <laughs> but I definitely don't want that to happen to Chester. He's a strong, glorious knight, this young lad. Look at that. Look at the size of that rumpus. He really is a little ham roll. A little big. Let's see if we can get Ernie's food dialed in and see if we can give him his food so that Chester doesn't steal it when it stops, when he stops eating his. Tammy said, my friend Lillian saved the cat from a kid that tried to put him in a microwave. I think I would shoot somebody if I saw them do that to a cat. That is messed up. Very messed up. I don't understand some people. I'm being facetious. I would not shoot a child, but that's fucked. Um, I'll never watch that movie, Don't Fuck With Cats. I've heard it's horrible. It's just what the guy did. I don't want anything to do with anything like that. Um, but on a lighter note, Ernie is doing good. He's, um, he's, it's a day by day process, but he's made improvements this week. Like I went into my room yesterday and him and Chester were sleeping on the top of my bed. And I've never seen Ernie even crawl on the top of my bed. Um, Chester's already back over here rubbing against my leg. He thinks he's getting round two. He thinks he's getting a double meal. You didn't even, oh, you did finish your dinner. You are a chonk lord. Um, but yeah, Ernie's making progress. He's getting a little more comfortable. He still hides, but he's he's coming around. I feel like in three to six months, I don't know how to gauge time with cats, but he's going to be such a little love bug, which I'm excited for. Chester, this is not for you, and I'm actually going to lock you in here. Susan Lee, hi from PA. I had to come see the king and the crown prince, and of course me. Yep, the peasant to the, the two lords. Chester thinks this is for him. He's such a little meatball. No, it's you don't get two dinners in a row, dude. This is for your brother. And you're not going to steal it this time like you did last week. No, stay there. It's a question, guys. All right, time to check on the herbivore. There he is. Hey, Aaron. Come here. Come here, little sweetie. I bet you. No, he went to foodies right now. Yeah, he's timid. He's so cute. There's something about him, his eyes, especially when he starts to let me love up on him. You can just see him light up. Look at Chester. <laughs> he's like, that's my food too. He's not happy right now. Come get it, Ernie. There you go. Get him. Good boy. There he goes. His brother's being extra devious and judgmental from right there. <laughs> hey, Ernie's. Yeah, he still hides. You know what? I think Ernie's deaf, guys. Or if he does have hearing, I think he only hears like 20%. And it would make sense because his ear is battered, but... 
he's been standing next to me before and not noticed me and I've like kissed and made noises and it's taken like five plus seconds for him to even notice me. And I think that's what's made him more skittish because he can't hear people or myself coming. When he looks up and sees me, it's his initial instinct is to immediately hide for survival. Um, so those are my thoughts. I don't know if the vet has a way of telling, but we'll figure that out on the next visit. He's definitely used to living under structures, but I think he is a little bit deaf. Chester is in full special operator, freaking stealth lurker mode. He's got his little ghillie suit on. He matches the wood floor. <laughs> and there's Ernie. What do you think, Bubba? He's so cute. Yeah, sorry. Last time he was under the other couch and there was no light and he just looked like a specter. He is the original Bat Boy, though. He's definitely a great little kitty. I can't wait till he comes around all the way. But we're making strides. He's come far, far from when I first brought him home on Christmas Day. And he's so damn cute. There's just something about him. He's so much smaller than Chester. Chester is obviously the king of cuteness. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? The hitman said, glad you fixed the front sprocket on that four-stroker. Yeah, that was... I've had that bike since 2018, and I've beaten the life out of it. In that last episode, the noise it was making was scary. I didn't really feel like it was something from the clutch, but I just, it sounded like gears skipping or I don't even know. So I brought it home. I put a heavy duty clutch in the bike. I had to take the whole casing apart, which is actually cool because I learned about that and then realized it was, in fact, the front sprocket, which was like a $20 fix in about 30 minutes of my time. So that was nice. If anyone watched the most recent episode, I know it wasn't a lot of work. In fact, there was pretty much no work, but you know, there's just there was a couple days this summer where my friends came up and I just felt like, hey, let's put the camera down and just enjoy. And still captured a good enough amount to make an episode so you guys could enjoy the experience. But yeah, it was just liberating to not have to do that. Um I know there's some foul language in there, but <laughs> <laughs> That's just who I am. I, I lost a bunch of subscribers on YouTube, and I think it's from all the F-bombs, and I really I really don't care. I don't know. I just feel like the moment you start trying to please everybody, you lose your authenticity. So I'm going to try and watch my language and not be so crass, but as part of who I am, it's my character. So Jenny said she appreciates the F-bombs. Well, at least some people appreciate it. I love Gordon Ramsay, and all he does is swear, so. And I know he's well loved by many. All right, I'm scrolling up to here just to see if people had any questions or any significant comments. Um, can you explain the benefit or enjoyment of jumping in freezing water? Well, I'm not going to try and go into the science of it. You can go online and look that up because there's tons of studies about heat shock proteins and just what it does for your body. But it's super good for your, your body and your mental health. Um, it kind of gives you a natural high that they say can last three to six hours. Um, with that being said, why we do it is because cliff jumping is one of our biggest hobbies and we normally do it in the summer and as a group of friends we see each other all the time in the summer and fall and then once winter hits it's miserably depressing <laughs> there's no not enough sun and all my cliff jumping friends live scattered throughout new england summer in connecticut summer in new jersey summer in massachusetts summer in new york summer in new hampshire summer in maine summer in vermont so it's a nice excuse to have everyone come together and just bro down. Just a, a good boys weekend. And uh, we throw on the wetsuits and jump in. And honestly, if you have the right gear, 
the cold water is not too much of a factor. Like I've floated around for 30 plus minutes before I've got good six, five, four wetsuit and booties and gloves. And yeah, it's just a great excuse to come together annually and have a trip like that where we get to see all our friends and kind of have a little intermission between the summer and the winter. Monzi Fry said, if you try to please everybody, then you can lose yourself, your identity. So just be yourself. I agree. I think that's a problem with a lot of content creators. I'm not even going to call myself a content creator. I'm just a dude who does video work and has cats and a homestead. But there's tons of people that have like a video blow up on the internet. And then they treat, keep trying to replicate that video and just fall into this one set framework of who they are and what they do. And it's like... I'm very different in many different ways. So I'm definitely not going to let myself fall into a box per se. Kim Halam, you seem angry tonight. I'm not angry at all. In the least, I have nothing to be angry about. Don't project on me, Kim. I'm not angry. I'm just hanging out. Um, KC, any new developments on the land? I'm going to the land tomorrow. And one of my close cliff jumping friends that's coming up for the weekend, Nate, he's going to come with me. And he's always had the same dream to do the same thing. And I think it'll be very cool for him to see. He's in the midst of trying to buy land in New York. And we share similar mindsets on, you know, owning a piece of property and just working the land and enjoying nature for what it is. So I'm super excited to have the opportunity to show him the land. He's been watching all of my series, obviously, because he's one of my good buddies. And, uh, yeah, it'll just be full circle. Um, Casey said, where in New York? Honestly, he just moved back to New York from Connecticut, so I'm not entirely sure, but probably towards southern Vermont, Granville, that kind of area, Granville, Adirondacks. I'm not sure exactly where he lives. Um, Kim said, sorry, sweetie. You don't need to say sorry. I'm not mad, though. I'm... Doing good. I got to ride my dirt bike today. So I'm happy. Um, Susan Wise said, you be you, F-bombs and all. Well, I'm glad you guys understand. Frank said it was great for POV for riding a dirt bike. Yeah, I, I do have to clarify. I think a lot of people are under the impression that um, all the trails that I've ridden in the videos are all on my land. And boy, would that be sweet, but they're not. It's a, it's a trail network in the area I live in. And there's just tons of... Vermont's known for having Class 4 roads. Um, I'm pretty sure they're implemented by the Army and the Air National Guard when Dwight D. Eisenhower was in office as president because he was ex-military. And he implemented the whole highway infrastructure in this country. And I'm not... I, don't quote me on this, but I know that the Class 4... Roads are intended for if shit hits the fan, the military has alternative passages to traverse around the state of Vermont and wherever it is. Um, I need to do a little more research, so you can vet that on yourself, but I know that there's something to do with that. But uh, there's class four roads all over Vermont and especially in northern Vermont, and they're gnarly. They're rocky, rutted filled with you know water when it rains and they're challenging and fun to ride on the dirt bikes so those trails aren't on my land um coming down the line in a couple episodes you'll see that i did start building a little trail loop down in my woods by my creek i spent like a whole day and a half got stung by a hornet's nest and built this trail and then come to find out once i got on my dirt bike even on my little pit bike it was just a little too tight of a trail for my liking. I like to be able to hold it open wide and go fast and smooth. So, I mean, in essence, I still made a trail that I can walk on my land. So that's cool. But, um, it was somewhat of a bust, but I will be doing more trail building in the future. Tammy asked, is your land back far from the Creek? If ever any floods where you watch the episodes and you see the trailers, that whole field is probably a good, 60 feet elevated from where the creek is so unless the ocean covered new hampshire and made its way all the way to vermont i don't ever see that being a possibility we had an extreme flood this summer 
and the water probably got two to three feet higher on the creek and i could tell from where it washed up all kinds of tree branches i was actually in the last episode we rode the dirt bike down to the creek at the end of the dirt biking section and you can hear me say oh how did all this shit get here and then i realized that was from that storm it washed all those sticks up to the tree line which was probably two or three feet it didn't go any higher and when i say the tree line i mean the closest tree to the river bank so flooding is not a risk for me unless i were to build something down near the creek but i will never build a permanent structure down there i might make a cool like stone shack or something but yeah that's that's pretty much that sue ann said how do you stay healthy physically in general just curious uh my brother owns a crossfit gym i am so bad at being diligent and going to the gym between my travel for work and just my lifestyle in general so i try and go there when i can it also helps that or it doesn't help that he doesn't charge me so i don't feel financially obligated it's not like i'm spending 200 dollars a month to have a gym membership and then i'm wasting my money by not going um, the month of January, I really made an effort and I think I got about 10 days in and between that and riding my dirt bikes, which I did today. Oh my God, I'm physically exhausted from that. I dumped the bike like six or seven times because of the ice and just pushing a dirt bike around, even a little bike like mine, it's 175 pounds. It's a workout and just riding moto is a workout. People think you just twist a throttle. It is a full body workout. You're literally using all your muscles to move the bike underneath you and that's a good workout. And then honestly, the land, the land got me in better shape than anything last year, dragging logs around and hauling scrap metal and prying those sheet metal slabs off the roof of the woodshed and the trailer. That was probably the best conditioning I had. I mean, this was the first year of skiing where my body did not hurt like crazy the first like five days. Like normally at the beginning of ski season, my feet are in pain. My legs are very sore after a couple runs. And this year I felt like I hadn't taken any time off. Like the winters had just consecutively grouped together. I just hopped on the skis and I felt great. So that was nice. <laughs> the, the hitman said, "Looks, look, it's ladies night out. I think my viewership, I can look at the analytics. It's like 70% women, which I'm honestly flattered. <laughs> I'm so surprised. But it's cool. Melanie Schneider gave me a $20 donation. Thanks, Melanie. I will put that towards Ernie's tooth cleaning fund. We raised $180 to $175 last week, and I did not even ask for any donations, but just know that all that money will be used to help with Ernie's dental work. Re-Evolutionary said, hey, Justin, love your content and cats. Thanks for it. Well, thanks for your support and your comment and showing up here to watch this and yeah, it's just cool to see people that, that like what I'm doing. Like I said, I lost like 40 or 50 subscribers on YouTube last week when I posted that episode, probably because I dropped a bunch of F-bombs and said some silly shit, but I just really don't care. I'm not trying to please everyone, and I'm just trying to give people the opportunity to follow my journey, and if they appreciate my personality and candor, then follow along, and if you don't, Keep moving. Don't tell me I don't need to say the F word. <laughs> There's so many people that feel the need to comment that thinking that it's going to make me change as a person. I can appreciate, like, if I'm around my grandmother, for instance, and I need to be muted and respectful and polite, I can very much turn that on. And I am always respectful and polite. I just, I like expressing myself using swear words. And I feel like it's... 2024 there's so much polluted shit on the internet if you're complaining about me saying the f word then might need to look in the mirror anyway we won't talk about that anymore no need to waste time on naysayers okay tammy said how about your well can you shake your body with your boys and use them as weights <laughs> you're a funny one tammy there's no updates on the well or any of that. I, I can't really do anything. Like the last month I did all the research. I called the right people. I got a rough idea of what system I'll probably have to implement, which is a mound system. And, you know, there's deep clay on my land. So it's going to take a lot of special sand they have to bring in, which is thankfully two towns over for me. But I've heard it's expensive. Nonetheless, I'm trying to squirrel money away. 
And until spring comes and the field melts, because there's about two and a half feet of snow, I just can't get an excavator in there to dig test pits. And so I will not have any updates on the well or the septic until that time, unfortunately, which sucks for me because I would love to tackle that issue right now and start figuring out how I can get my future home figured out. But that's the way she goes, as they say. So just got to play by year. Veronica said we're here for Chester. Hubba hubba, where is he? He's He got what he wanted from his loyal servant, and now he's slumbered on his cat tree. We'll touch base with him in a little bit. <laughs> and like I said, I'm going to try and keep posting more videos of the cats on YouTube. I've just been so bogged down with client work and travel, and it's just hard to get into a routine going to the gym. And honestly dragging my feet i've just been procrastinating a lot of shit lately i've been in a rut of sorts between all the stuff that's been going on the last couple of weeks and honestly the last two months breaking up with my girlfriend the loss of one of my best friends um just a lot of stuff and yeah the, the whole septic and the well thing and getting freaked out that i may have bought a piece of land that i can't develop there's just been a lot of stress but that's life everybody's dealing with their own personal problems and mine are no greater than anybody else's and probably much less than many others so i have much to be thankful for jenny said our land has a lot of clay and iron and we have a 300 foot well it can be done Woo, 300 feet that must have been spendy yeah i hope i don't have to go that deep but they probably will knowing how much clay there is um montero labato we think of you often where are you from montero that's such a cool name it's like montero labato i love that melissa keep being positive i'm always positive i'm always gonna be on the up and up one of my favorite sayings is onward and upward from one of my favorite comedians theo vaughn and if you don't know who theo vaughn is he's a funny guy from louisiana and I would recommend looking into him. Montero said it's Brazilian. No wonder I like it. I grew up doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I trained and competed for many years. My teacher, Julio Fernandez, actually Julio, because the Jays aren't silent. He's a legend. Jonesy, joined him late. About losing subscribers because you drop F-bombs. I'm getting, I'm betting it's not the F word, it's the GD word. I know I find it offensive, but heard more don't handle that GD word. <laughs> Sometimes I forget about that too. I, I, I'm not even a religious person, so I mean it with no, no, um, no negativity, but I guess I should watch that one because there are many religious people. I know Jesus was a legendary dude. I know that much. I don't have any problems with Jeebus. We're cool. So I guess I'll have to watch out for the GDs. Totally cool with Jesus, guys. I'm sorry if I've burned your ears with some of my GDs. <laughs> and I'm not laughing at that. I just feel funny saying GD. Mm -mm -mm. But as I said, you can't please everybody. But I will make note of that and try and be better because I know that that's personal to some people. <clears throat> What do I have here on my little notes list? Have any of your videos been demonetized due to the F-bombs? It's funny because they say if you swear in the first like two minutes of your video, it'll get demonetized. It hasn't happened yet. I honestly don't in, like incur enough views to really make any money off of views. I'm getting like 2,000 to 3,000 per video. The original video where I rescued Chester, that got like a half a million views and... Um, that made me some money, but I'm I'm not really making any money right now anyway, which doesn't matter to me. I'm just doing this for myself and now for you guys. But um, I haven't been struck with any demonetization as far as I know from my mouth. Um, I have noticed that the license... The licensed music that I've been using from William Ryan Fritch, if I have it extend for very long in the end of my video, 
they'll flag that and demonetize it, which is annoying because I literally have a license to use the footage. So every time I have to, uh, what is it called, appeal the demonetization and go through a process and attach all this legal jargon so that they understand I have paid to use that song. But that's pretty much the only hurdle I've had to overcome on YouTube. Um, I suspect that they don't recommend or push my videos because of my foul mouth. But that's neither here nor there. I don't know. I don't even know why they suggested the Chester video when it came out. That Everyone said this was a recommended video, and that's how I gained so much traction on this channel for a short period of time. But maybe they caught on to my dirty little mouth, and now they're done with me. <laughs> um... Montero Lobato said we should all watch our language, but more awful things can be said than cursed words. I agree. There's a time and a place for everything, but when I'm up on my land and I'm by myself and I'm working in the middle of nowhere, I'm going to let some F-bombs out because it's just how I express myself. Frank said I heard the appeal is a pain in the butt. It is, and then if you appeal it and they deny it, then if you appeal it again, you risk having the the video taken off your channel. So... And I had many appeals denied, and then I have to contact William, the guy who made the song, and be like, hey, can you reach out to the music agency that handles your music and tell them to fix this? <laughs> Joanne said, love your dirty little mouth. <laughs> Just be you. Yeah, when you hit your finger with a hammer, that, that's uh, cause for enough bomb. Cat Lady said I was raised around that, and they shouldn't get so butt hurt. I've had a foul mouth for a very long time, so I'm too far gone at this point. But I will work on the GDs, I promise. Try not use the GDs. And Casey, you know the old saying, come if they can't take a joke. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we got any other questions here. Actually, let me reference my list. I try and write down little notes and things I can just touch on. I was in Calgary, Canada this last weekend for a Nitro Cross rally shoot. And it was supposed to be an ice race because it's Calgary. It's cold. It's winter. And they couldn't even race because it was too warm. It was such an anticlimactic weekend. We literally flew there and the cars went on the ice two times the entire weekend. So that was pretty... Uh, Pretty bummer. I mean, I still got paid and I did my job, but it's like putting lipstick on a pig when you have to make a cool video and none of the action is there. They did a parade lap around the track. They didn't even get to open it up and chase each other in the cars. So it is what it is. But Calgary is a really cool city and enjoyed it there. And I have nothing but good things to say about that area of Canada. Heard a lot of A's and a lot of sorries, which I like. I say sorry too much myself. But it's always funny when you hear Canadians sound so accurate to the stereotypes, which I know exist here in America too, so I'm not making fun of Canadians. I love Canadians. Good old story. Otis Blossom said, just saw Ernie on your bed with Chester. Yeah, I just posted that little video of them being buddies. They've definitely gotten a lot closer. I always see Chester lick at Ernie's ass. I'm like, what are you doing? Jesus. Do cats do that? I thought dogs sniff butts. I didn't know cats lick each other's butts. What a world to live in. Kim Halam. I've tried numerous times to send money. Get to end and it won't send. Help. Do you have Venmo or PayPal? I haven't done any donations on YouTube, so I'm not entirely sure how it works. Um, if you have PayPal, let me know, or Venmo, and we'll figure it out, or Apple Pay, there's options. Frank asked, what do you do with the kitties when you travel? Um, my dad watches them, which I'm very thankful for. It's funny, too, because Chester just snuggles up hard on my dad when I'm gone. He'll always send me pictures of Chester in bed with him. And I know he loves it. It's so funny because we were never cat people. And I became one because of my ex-girlfriend Hannah. But my dad was not a cat person until I brought Chester home. And now he definitely loves that little ball of fluff. 
Um, so that's nice, and it's nice to have him. That's one b- benefit to being 33 years old and living in your father's basement is that when you travel for work all the time like I do, you have somebody to help out with the cats. And then when he's traveling, I have a lot of my close friends who you've seen in the episodes, like Wyatt, who was in the last video riding dirt bikes with me. He comes over and helps feed Chester and Grim Nicholas, little Nick, who's been in some of the episodes and Big Nick. And I've got a good circle of friends. So Kay said, I've never had a cat lick another's butt. Sniff, though, yes, and then do the funky face. I don't know what Chester's deal is. He's from the the dirty woods. Maybe he just likes butts. John Nichols, are there more kitties on or near the property? Um, there's my neighbor's cats who are full-blown outdoor cats, but there are no more strays from my understanding. I'm going up to the land tomorrow. I'm going to check the trail camera to see if there's any elusive cats that have been lurking around, but people often ask me about copper. Copper is my neighbor's cat. I actually offered to buy him off them because I loved him so much and his little guttural purr. And I feel like he's Chester's brother, but it's their daughter's cat and she's way too bonded with the cat, which I totally understand. I just, they have a bunch of cats and I figured I'd offer some money just to help alleviate the responsibilities they have and help with their kids. But uh, they're holding on to Copper, and he's doing well, and they have a bunch of other cats. Um, so as far as I know, there's not any other strays, but they do come down to my land to eat the food out of the feeders, which many of you have graciously donated to the Amazon wish list. And tomorrow I'll be filling up the feeders. Jenny, uh, didn't you hide Chester in the beginning uh, of the live? Sorry, I'm a little confused. Or the beginning of the series, or... Uh, Montero said you have nice digs I am not complaining I pay $900 a month and I certainly have plenty of space what does your dad think about Ernie was he okay with kitty number two coming in the house that was one of those situations where I just figured I would seek forgiveness as opposed to ask permission and I brought Ernie home I snuck him into my basement and Oh, sorry. Did I hide Chester? No, Chester, I didn't hide. I brought him home and he was so beat up and his ear was all messed up and his whiskers were burnt off or chewed off. I don't even know. His whiskers were messed up. And I think my dad just knew, I mean, given the circumstances and I had been talking about it, I was like, there's this cat. I'd shown him videos and photos and I think he just knew he wasn't going to be able to tell me no. And so with Ernie... I was like, okay, I'm pushing it with a second cat. This might be a little much. So I did sneak him home. And luckily, because he was such an elusive little rascal, he just hid it in my room for like two weeks. And then my dad's girlfriend was up, and she's a huge cat person. And I went out to lunch with my dad and his girlfriend. And I basically spilled the beans. I was like, oh, by the way, uh, there's a second cat in the basement. And he was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, there's a second cat in my room. He's been there for two weeks. And so I guess having had him for two weeks and him not causing any issues, it was kind of like, how are you going to say no to that? So that was how Ernie got into the house. Ollie said, why the cats smell and lick each other's butts is greeting and communicating. Can you imagine if humans did that? That would be interesting. I wish that humans scratched each other's backs. Everybody would be happier if we just went up to each other and give a nice little back scratch. Like, I get jealous of how much scratches dogs and cats get. But somebody would ruin it. Montero said, when you get 10 cats, we'll worry. Yeah, I don't see myself getting any more cats anytime soon. I would like to get a dog once I have my own house. And I, this sounds crazy, but I really want a pet raccoon. So bad. My Daisy 66, I'm very late, guys. Nice to see you. Justin, how are you and the kitties? Kitties are good. Chester's taking a nap post dinner. Ernie is fed and he's chilling out too. 
everything's good. And if you guys ever join these lives late, they're always uploaded after the fact to my YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch any of them. Casey said, everyone, don't forget to like. Casey knows. Everyone like. I don't know what the likes do, but I do appreciate them. Mm -mm -mm. Gay said, I guess it wouldn't be cool to kidnap a neighbor's cat. Yeah, I'm trying to keep good, good relations with my neighbors because my land is in a very rural and remote area and I can't be up there all the time. So I want them to be my allies so they can help look after my land and protect it or notify me if anyone's creeping around or, yeah, just help me out. I mean, the neighbors that have all the kitties are the same people that pulled my truck out of the field like three or four episodes back when I got it stuck in the field. So they're cool. I bring them weed. I don't even smoke weed anymore, but I'll bring them weed. And, you know, it's just, it's friends. You just help each other out. And they're actually younger than me. They've got two kids and they're thriving. They live off grid and I respect what they've done. Montero said back scratching is why people get married. That is that should be a bumper sticker, that or a T-shirt. That is very true and accurate. <laughs> Did the vet make an educated guess on what happened to Ernie's ear? He said probably from cat fights or frostbite, which is what I suspected. Um, honestly, I'm sure it was a combination of both. Um, I touched on it earlier, but I do think that he's partially deaf, if not a hundred percent deaf because like I've been sitting on the toilet before and he walked by and I'm like doesn't even notice me and then he'll look over so definitely think Ernie's got some ear ear issues from his rough history on the land which is all the more reason for me to rescue him and give him a warm and loving home mm -mm -mm. Penfield Meadowlark, sorry to hear about your breakup with your girlfriend recently. What do you look for in a woman? I honestly, that's such a hard question to answer. I'm supposed to give a bunch of outgoing, smart, successful. Sorry, I'm not making fun of your question. It's just, it's kind of a silly one to answer. Um, I'm, I guess, like anybody wants, they want someone that's interested in them and wants them everybody wants to be wanted and is compassionate and motherly i mean i want to have children someday so i definitely like to be in a relationship with you know a woman that's got that element and hannah hannah was awesome she did it all so i don't even feel like going on here and listing things because i feel like it could be misconstrued about me saying what my ex-girlfriend lacked um and my personal relationship is, I'm not saying this in a dickheadish way, but not really the business of the internet. Um, if I choose to put it out there, you guys will know. But yeah, I mean, the same thing anything wants from a significant other, somebody that's super supportive and believes in you and um, is ambitious and hardworking and loving and compassionate and empathetic. And yeah. Casey asked, do you ever see the Northern Lights where you are? There's been sightings in Vermont. It's just every time it's happened, it's like three or four in the morning and I'm either traveling or I just don't, I'm not awake. But you can definitely see them in Vermont. There's a photographer on Instagram. I think it's Dark Sky Chaser. He's from Vermont and he's captured the Northern Lights over Lake Champlain a couple times. Definitely a bucket list goal of mine to uh, see them. Frank said Hannah was great in the videos. Yeah, she was awesome. It sucks thinking about all the good times we had. <clears throat> Truth Seeker said the likes help with the algorithm to bring more traffic to your channel. Well, then thumbs it up, homies, and thank you for clarifying that to me, Truth Seeker. You do know the truth. It's a very fitting name. Gay said there's that channel with a Canadian guy who feeds a pack of raccoons every evening. He has pet cats in his house. My my um my old step Oma, because she was Austrian, lived in Quebec in a very rural area and we would go stay with her. 
And she had a huge porch on her house. On like, she had like a hundred acres. And every night she would put out like 15 dog food bowls and the raccoons would just come. And there's so many of them. I've always loved raccoons. I love all animals, but raccoons are just so mischievous and they're elite. They can survive so much and climb trees and use their little fingers and forage for trash. Leela Love, thank you for the $2 donation. That's greatly appreciated. That will go towards Ernie's teeth. We'll get him a nice smile like mine. Melissa Battle said, saw an eagle today in Alabama. First time to ever see one. That's awesome. I've seen a lot of eagles in Vermont. Like, more than I'd expect. And they're so cool to see. It's such a magnificent animal. Surprisingly, I've never seen a moose in Vermont. And the Northeast Kingdom is teeming with them. But I've never seen a moose in Vermont. And then when I went to Jackson Hole, Wyoming to ski, I saw three in one day on the ski, on the ski slope. It was unreal. Three moose in one day. They're everywhere there. So that was cool. No sorries needed, Penfield. It was a valid question. I'm just, I've been out of a relationship for like a month and a half, two months. So I'm definitely still grieving the loss of that because. It's like I, we failed or I failed, you know, failed to figure things out and make them work. And that's a tough pill to swallow. Tons of raptors here in the Rockies, Aliquot said. Holy shit, John said, watch out for the eagles. One ate my sister's cat in Maine. Well, I haven't seen any near my land. I've only seen them in certain areas of Vermont, but that's good to know. I think Chester is far too thick and too much of a survivor to get caught by an eagle. Every dog or kitty has their day, but Chester is just ultimate hunter Rambo survival kitty. Aside from Ernie, Ernie's ghost, ultimate sniper. Mm -mm -mm. Jenny said, that's awesome. I lay out a line of food on the deck and I have up to 20 sometimes. It's amazing they come from the forest. Oh my gosh, someday I'll have the Trash Panda Army. And you guys will get free raccoon content. I'll have one on my shoulder. And uh, we'll be best buddies. AMS said, I don't know how to use PayPal or that other one you mentioned. Any other way to donate? If you are watching this video, there should be a thing that says... Super badge, super sticker, or super thank you. I'm sure some people in here can comment to that because people in here have donated and or are donating. And obviously you're going to have to enter in your credit card info. But you can probably save it on YouTube. So if you ever want to make donations to me again. Otherwise, there's an app for your phone called Venmo. V-E-N-M-O. You can download that and I can post my information. And uh, aside from that, I have PayPal and Apple Pay. So there we go. Tanner knows. Little dollar bill money symbol under the text box. Click that, then the badge super options pop up. That's my buddy Tanner. You guys like snowmobiles and cars and fast shit? He does it all. Go check out his, his YouTube channel. He's just started YouTube this year, like me, and he is very entertaining and funny and a good egg. Months in Motorsports on YouTube. Check it out. I actually, if you, I don't know if it's on my YouTube channel. I think it is. If you scroll down, I did a story about him and his dad when they used to go uh, drifting in cars because they both wrench on vehicles. And I made a nice little story piece about their dynamic and relationship and drifting. So yeah, check out Tanner. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, he's got an egghead. Yeah. <laughs> Frank said, I've donated with Super Sticker, but you have to have charge card info preloaded. Interesting. The Hitman. My other new name for YouTube is USMC Sniper. I saw, I saw your comments. I put two and two together. I know we're on the same wavelength, brother. 
you know about the dirt bikes. YouTube take 30% of donations. More if you... Okay, so... If anyone has Apple Pay, PayPal, or Venmo, and they want to donate money to me, or basically Ernie's mouth, uh, that would be the best solution. Um, shoot me a message on Facebook. Uh, it'll probably go to my other inbox, but I'll accept it and give you my appropriate information. Um, Jonesy's asking about PayPal. I need to remember my PayPal account. Or actually, maybe I can just pull it up on here and then show you guys on my computer what it is. If I can even remember. This is one of the hardest things about this day and age is having a million different passwords. I have so many different accounts with different passwords. It makes my head want to pop. Uh, let's see. I'm in PayPal. I'm going to find the information you guys. Okay, here we go. Bingo. Bang biscuit. There you go. PayPal.me backslash Justin Jenny 802. Screenshot it because I'm not going to hold my phone up here forever. Almost gave out some of my personal information here. Uh, Frank said, I have Venmo. I'm just at Justin Jenny. You'll see the same picture I have for my Facebook and my YouTube and all that. So make sure it's the right one. You can send me a, if you need to confirm the last three digits of my phone number, it's 0838. Because they asked for that. Aliquot, got a dip in five. Can we see Ernie again? I will graciously bless you with an Annie sighting. He's probably hiding underneath the couch. Let's see. Oh, he didn't even finish his meal. No wonder Chester was trying to swoop in. I think he moved under this couch, which is the one that has horrible lighting. Yeah, he's right there. I'm sorry, you can't even see him, really. Can I turn a light on while I'm going live? I don't think I can. No, I can't. I'm sorry I tried, Aliquot. I don't want to blast him with uh, my flashlight and piss him off. He's a sensitive boy. I'm still trying to get him out of his shell, but I will show you the Lord of the North. He's like a fierce lion. Look at the explosive peat hair. Why is my phone so greasy? Sorry, I'm going to wipe off the lens. Ah, uh, much better. Look at that. He's a holy roll. Chonky little ham roll. I love the stripes on his tail. Like, <laughs> that's just legendary. If that ain't a sign that there's somebody making these little guys extra cool, then I don't know what is. Yeah, he is the rat slayer, the ultimate. Fl Look at that explosive floof. I don't ever want it to disappear. It's funny because you guys have been able to watch the episodes uh, of late and Chester's streamlined, he doesn't have all the hair. So I'm sure it's funny for you guys to see the contrast. He looks like a totally different cat without all of his hair. Um, personally, I like his coat more than when he's streamlined in the spring. I just like when he's a giant ball of fluff. But I love him one way or another. He's my little legend. Mm -mm -mm. Dustin, Jenny, put your PayPal in your description. Thank you, Cats Cats. I will add my PayPal info and my Venmo info to my channel info after this live is done. So you guys can find it. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. I don't have any other little notes that I've written down. Holy smokes, it's already been an hour on here. 
Does anyone have any more questions? I'm in no rush to go, so if you want to ask me stuff or have any thoughts, suggestions, ideas, tomorrow I'm going to the land with Nate, and we'll probably just do some work down by the river and take some more trees down. And Oh, yes, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Suicide Jumper, a.k.a. The Dragon. Love you, buddy. I'll see you tomorrow. That's one of my friends that's coming cliff jumping this weekend. My number one supporter. The freaking legend. AMS, AMS said, I'm old, Justin. I don't do Facebook or any of the social media. You have done yourself a favor, my friend. It is a cesspool. There is so much content and just never-ending people arguing about politics and how to use tools correctly. I love watching, like, tradesman videos on Facebook and Instagram. Of people, you know, showing how to build a deck or do this or that. And it is so funny how toxic the comment section is. It's just a million jabronis. Oh, that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to do it like this. I've been doing drywall for 25 years, bud. It's like, like I can appreciate constructive criticism or making a suggestion, but the internet has given too many people a platform to voice their opinions because some people are just stupid as fuck, to be completely honest. Sorry if that's aggressive, but it's just like, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it. And if you do have constructive criticism, word it in a way that doesn't make somebody feel like they're being attacked. And it's just funny. I love watching all these trade videos. It's almost more entertaining to go into the comments and see all of the shit talk from people that are sitting at home behind their computers. And I'm sure once I get to the stage of building my house and all the DIY stuff I'm going to do from watching other people's YouTube videos and trying to learn and just, I'm going to get lit up in the comments, but I don't really care. Any song said, do you fish in the rivers? I am not the biggest fisherman just because I don't have the patience for it. I like things that go fast. I like riding dirt bikes. I like skiing. I like shooting guns. Um, I do appreciate fishing. I like going lake trout fishing, like way out on the lake with my buddies. I like spear fishing because you actually have to swim down and spear them yourself. But um, fishing I appreciate, but I just don't think it's ever been something that's really clicked with me. I just I don't have the patience. I would have more fun swimming in the water with goggles and a spear gun trying to actually get them. So, just how many containers do you currently have and what are they used for? Are you trying to break into my property? No, I'm kidding. Um, I have one 40-foot storage container, and it's just, I use it for storage. It's as simple as that. I've got a bunch of the old stuff that Richard left behind stashed away in there. Like, I finally managed to move the two wood stoves in there. That's one or two episodes from now. You'll get to see that. Um, I keep my brush hog in there and shovels, tarps, end of the world survival supplies, just stuff, random stuff. It's not filled to the brim yet. Kim said, do you like jet skiing? I love jet skiing. I tried it for the first time two years ago, and all I could think about was the movie Waterworld from the 90s with Kevin Costner. I was just in smoker mode, just ripping on the jet ski on Lake Champlain, pretending I was chasing people. It was so much fun. I would love to own a jet ski someday. The hitman said, now you take your riding lawnmower there and store it. Yeah, I don't have a riding lawnmower. It's a brush hog, so I still have to push it. But once I get a tractor, I don't want to buy a riding lawnmower. It just seemed it would get stuck in my field. There's too much moisture. Um, so it was brush hog, then tractor. So... The brush hog is handling business for now, and you'll see that in a couple episodes from now. And then once I get a tractor, that'll make it easier. I might even have Mark just mow my field this summer for a couple hundred bucks. Rodney, ever going to make it back to a snowcross race? God, I would love to do that, brother, but I'd have to get paid. Or if I was in Minnesota or something like that. Rodney Ray is a buddy of mine that I got to go to Duluth, Minnesota, and shoot a snowcross race when I used to work for GoPro. It was badass. Those sleds are so sick. Maybe I'll build a snowcross track on my field, Rodney, and you can just come out and hang and get after it. 
Mm-mm-mm-mm. It's always I it intrigues me and it pleases me when I see my friends that are actually tuned into this. It also makes me a little self conscious. I'm like Holy shit, you guys must think I'm a turkey, but I am a turkey, so Penfield Meadowlark, what are you trying to say? You keep retracting your messages, and your name strikes me as something very British. The greasy phone, yeah, you know I think you're too about grease, don't you, bud? Rodney Ray, you ride sleds. Go check out my buddy Tanner's channel, Munson Motorsports. He's posting fire sled vlogs. You'll appreciate it. He's a good egg because I know you're a diehard sled guy. I'm introducing two of my friends through a YouTube live. Rodney shoots snowcross, or used to, and almost got killed by Tucker Hibbert, right? <laughs> Didn't he almost land on you at a race? Sorry if I wasn't supposed to say that. Yeah, Rodney's a big-time sled guy. Mm -mm -mm. True seeker, do you have otters in your area? Uh, there's otters, not in my creek, because it's a creek, not a river. But they are all over Vermont. I feel like this question comes up every time on these lives. But yeah, we have the Otter Creek, the Missisquoi River, the Winooski, um, Lake Champlain. There's otters to be found all over Vermont. It's just, if you want to see them, you have to be out at dusk or dawn, because that's usually when they're out and about. But they are prevalent in Vermont, and there's many namesakes named after otters. And there's one right there. He's looking ghetto fabulous. This is Roxy. She's got her Bose headphones on and her Vermont sports car beanie. She's a real Vermont girl right there. Found her on the side of the road. She'd gotten smoked by a car, and I got her taxidermied for $1,300. Who would have thought that getting an otter taxidermied would be that expensive? I have never gotten anything taxidermied, so I was definitely surprised by the bill for that one, but it was worth it. I'll have her forever. Any beaver dams in your area? Uh, there's beaver dams all over, but not on my property. But there are beaver dams everywhere in Vermont. There's The beavers are thriving in Vermont. Vermont's actually one of the only... I think it's one of the only states that still allows trapping of beavers, which honestly, I'm not a big fan of trapping. I know it's tradition for some people, so do what you got to do. But hunting, I'm totally cool with. But having an animal stuck in a trap for eight hours or a whole day until you come back and shoot it in the head, thats that just seems cruel as hell to me. And that's just lame. It was one, it'd be one thing if you were surviving and it was doomsday scenario. I'm all for trapping. But if you're just doing it to get pelts or fucking mount one on your wall... Why don't you lay out there in a ghillie suit and hunt it? Be a real man. Or a man. Or a human. Penfield Metal Art. Can you recommend a decent pair of binoculars for looking at nature? Any Nikon binoculars. They make a bunch of them in the $150 to $300 price range. You cannot go wrong with any Nikon binoculars. They are Nikkor glass is incredible. Nikon, just like the camera company. So that's what I would recommend. Annie Song, have you ever been to Monterey? Best place to catch sightings and photos of the critters. Well, once upon a time, I lived in California. And it was so funny because I grew up in Vermont. And as a Vermonter, you're in a landlocked state. So we have animals, but we just don't have that many exotic animals. And I grew up reading National Geographic and just obsessed with the animals. And then I remember like seeing a starfish for the first time. Like my head almost exploded. And um, I saw a ton of otters in Santa Cruz. I don't know if I ever made it to Monterey. I don't think I did. But when I was in Santa Cruz, which I visited a few times, I saw a bunch of sea otters. So that was cool. That was my true first otter encounter, actually, before being in Vermont and living back here again. I saw my first otter in California. Kim, have a good night. Sleep well. Appreciate you tuning in. Gay said that's a lot of money to stuff an otter. Yeah, the thing is, you know, most taxidermists normally do deer mounts and animals that are people are commonly hunting. So to know how to do an otter, you have to be very skilled. And the woman who did it for me lives in Benson, Vermont, which is very southern Vermont. And she, I called six or seven taxidermists, and she was the only one that was willing to do it. So. 
I had some friends help pay for it that are part of our cliff jumping group, Vermonters, because it was fitting. Local aquarium. Laura Bishop said, I love going to my local aquarium. If you're ever in Boston, go to the Boston Aquarium. It's pretty awesome. What are we doing here? Why is this not? Mm, sorry, I'm scrolling through things. Gay said, Chris Farley, his fam lived near me. I love Chris Farley. He's one of my favorites. Hello. Tide pools are my happy place. Definitely get to Monterey one day. That's what Aunt Annie said. Tide pools are cool. Anyone else have any more questions, comments, anything? I got to make dinner here soon and... Start getting ready to go to the land in the morning. I gotta get all my cameras prepped so I can film an episode for you guys to watch probably six months from now. But then I gotta all get all my gear ready to go cliff jumping on Saturday in frigid cold water. So I got my work cut out for me. I also have to do a bunch of video editing tonight for clients, which I probably won't get to because I'm just tired, but I've been to the Baltimore Aquarium. I went with my now deceased Opa when I was a young young boy. He used to take me on so many cool little adventures, museums, aquariums. Legend. Rest in peace, Opa. Della. Hey, Justin from Georgia. It finally let me talk in the chat. Della. Well, I'm glad it worked this time, Della. I'm sorry it's toward the end of the live stream. Jennifer L. asked, are you going to video the cliff jumping? I am. I'm bringing my drone and some GoPros, and I'm going to bring my photo camera to take photos. So I'll probably create some sort of video. It's it's just like going up to the land. It's like I want to have fun, and then I'm in a wetsuit, and there's water dripping out of the end of it onto my camera, and I'm trying to take photos and document the experience and at the same time enjoy myself. Granted, I enjoy documenting things, but... Sometimes you just want to leave the cameras at home. The Hitman. I got no icons or smileys to click on. Did you restrict them? I have not restricted anything in this. Um, not that I know of, at least. Della said I hear that. It's okay. I love your channel. Thanks, Della. Appreciate that. Anybody else? The cat Bob said, I've been watching all your previous cliff jumps. It's pretty fun stuff. It was cool because I was at the forefront of making cliff jumping videos. Like cliff jumping is now exploded in popularity. There's so many people online, young kids mostly, that are just doing like quadruple backflips off 100 foot cliffs. It's insane how the bar has been raised, which is inevitable in any extreme sport in anything really in this day and age. Um, people have just propelled themselves to new heights and skills and abilities, which is always impressive. But it was cool because buying a GoPro and making cliff jumping videos is what spurred my passion for video production, which ultimately led to my career. And I was doing it with my friends before there was really more than three or four people making consistent cliff jumping videos on YouTube. So I'm still pretty proud of that because it kind of blossomed into this huge community that is still tight knit to some degree. It's gotten bigger than I can keep track of now, but those who know, know. And the core group of cliff jumping people, there's a very tight knit community. And it's cool. You know, I could fly to England and go stay with some people that cliff jump over there or whatever. So that's cool. So the cliff jumping stuff will always hold a dear place in my heart. Gay said, all this time since chat started, tornado warnings here, all but local news preempted. I'd probably be freaked out with this, without this chat distraction. Where do you live, Gay? I was in Oklahoma in June of last year on a 10th story of a hotel listening to 
air, uh, air raid tornado sirens go off. Wondering <laughs> if I was supposed to go to the basement or not. Like, I'm from Vermont. We don't have that. It was crazy. Though. I was watching palm trees almost snap. Trash bins blow through the streets. I've never seen such insane winds. And I love Oklahoma and the Midwest, but that is some scary shit. I'll take a blizzard over that any day. Morrissey, I hope you're roasting a fat blunt right now because I see you're still in here. Thanks for the heart, buddy. I love you too. Mm -mm -mm. VVY asks, will you do video cam on Ernie? Ernie is hiding underneath the super dark couch, and I don't really want to bluster him, but when this finishes, if you rewatch it, I filmed him eating his dinner earlier, so you'll be able to enjoy that. Annie said, love a cool beanie. Have you thought of an otter camp beanie? Just a thought. Oh, thank you for commenting that. Um, I'm literally in the midst of adding t-shirts to my, or shirts, Chester shirts, hats. This has got Chester's paw on it. Definitely going to throw some beanies up. So just bear with me. I'll try and have everything done by Monday and I will post on the community part on my channel. And for anyone that wants to support me or just, you know, buy something to show support for these videos and my channel you will be able to do so. And I also have shirts with the standard Otter Camp logo that you see in the beginning of every video. And I'll be sure to make some beanies and some flat brim hats and some other stuff. So The Hitman said, I think Richard's well was really where his outhouse sat. I don't think it was always that dirty. <laughs> it was definitely just a nat uh, natural spring that was dug. It wasn't a well. I shouldn't have said that in that video. It's a, it's a dug spring. But yeah, the water is murk dog. It is definitely freaky. Um, I'm building an outhouse this summer, though. I'm looking forward to that so I don't have to keep dropping dropping dookies into the fire pit. Because that is currently what I do. Not that anyone needs to know that, but... Gotta survive out there in the land. Yet. Ella said, I saw the video of Chester and Ernie bonding. I loved it. Yep, it's very heartwarming. It, it, make, it fills my heart with joy when I see him snuggling. Prego, prego. Gay said she lives in Madison, Wisconsin. I, I think we, I, you told me that before, and I must have forgotten because I love Wisconsin. I did not know there's tornadoes up in Wisconsin. I hope you're safe up there. I love fried cheese curds. Just had to say it. They're one of the greatest appetizer snacks in the world. Just saying that's making me hungry. Any last questions? Jennifer L., you can make a composting toilet. Use sawdust. I did a bunch of research on the compost toilets. Um... Because, you know, I was all freaked out about having to get a septic done and how much that would cost. But I've read a lot of people's, t like, personal experiences using them. And it just, it seems like a pain in the ass, to be quite honest. Like, I have no problem sprinkling wood chips in there. But you have to have, from what I read, an entrance to the compost toilet from the exterior of your house when you do need to offload said sewage. And I just want to make a very structurally sound home that I can flush a toilet with water flowing. So outhouse will hold hold me down for the time being once I build that in the spring. And I'll keep a bucket of lime and just put some lime in there to mitigate the smell. And then, yeah, eventually have an actual flushable toilet in a house. Um, uh, oh, when will the Dodo video run, Susan asked. Um, I got an email just the other day. Let's see if I can pull this up. I think it's on my other email. Here we go. 
Hi, Justin. I hope that you and Chester are doing well and are ready for the weekend. I wanted to update you on our project. The video is almost finished and is now ready for your preview, which I did already watch. Um, as of right now, our project is slated to be published on February 16th, so eight days from now. Um, thereafter, the project will be repackaged for Instagram and TikTok about a week's, week or so later. They said, just so you know, this date is not concrete and can change at any time. I will notify you if this occurs. Um, so yeah, I did get to watch the Dodo video. and It's cool. Um, I sent them so much good footage. And I guess it's the Dodo. So they just, they highlighted everything about Chester, which is fine. Um, but they didn't really, they didn't. I don't think they did the best job telling the story of how I bought an abandoned piece of land and then happened to stumble into this cat, which is the whole story of my YouTube channel. So I guess, you know, they know what they're doing. They have to cut to the chase because people are watching it for animals. Um, so I'm just thankful that they wanted to feature me and it'll probably create some good exposure and get some more people following this channel. Um, I'm sure that's going to come with a new degree of people who are have their opinions and whatnot. The nice thing about all the people in here is like, all, I, I feel like I know all you people, even though I don't know many of you. But we've developed our own little internet relationship. I see the same names popping up in these, you know, and you guys, I think many of you came to my channel because of Chester and in turn realized that I too am somewhat interesting and my relationship that I have with my cats is interesting. And so you're more invested in everything I'm doing now. It's bigger than just the cats. And I know that the Dodo is going to bring in a lot of great new people and it's probably going to bring in a lot of people that are complete turkeys, which is fine, whatever. They're going to have their opinions, but it'll be interesting to see the effect that it does have on my channel and social media presence. Jonesy said, which video? Um, I don't know if you're asking me which video on my channel, but the reason they found me was because of the video of me rescuing Chester, which is I rescued a barn cat. Um, and he changed my life. I think it's episode seven or eight. VVY said, watching you clean your land was more interesting. See, it's nice to, um, it's nice to see that there aren't, I'm totally appreciative of all the people that are here for the cats, but it's also nice to hear that there are people here that may not necessarily care about the cats, but they're still engaged by my personality and the work I'm doing. So it's just nice to hear that they would still be watching if there was no Chester. Um, and honestly, I mean, clean it, the cleanup stuff's always satisfying and there'll be more cleanup to come, but a lot of the fun projects get to start where I get to be creative, like building a sauna down by the river and clearing that area out and building a, a shooting pavilion slash lean to and turning the, the tree Island in the middle of the field into a secret fire area and just all kinds of cool stuff. Oh, Jonesy said, forgive me. I don't know. Does Dodo pay for your videos or the views they get? No, they, they don't pay me. They're like every other platform on the internet. They just offer you exposure. So what, what can you do at this point? It's worth it to me to trade trade it off. It'll bring more people to my channel and that will ultimately potentially yield me some financial gain down the road. So I don't mind if they repurpose my content because they are literally the biggest animal platform in the world. You know, I wouldn't be just giving my precious footage to everybody. It was funny too, because I gave them so much good cinema quality, like shot on a cinema camera footage and I put it all together in chronological order like basically put the whole story together for them and then most of the shots they used are like shitty iPhone 
footage that I had that you know that I've made a lot of these shorts with, and it's not shitty. It's just shitty compared to my cinema camera, and that was kind of surprising to me. And the way they chopped up my interview, like I know how that goes. I've interviewed countless people for shoots and story pieces, and people fumble their words or they don't, you know, they say um or like, and you have to cut little things out. Or just cut stuff out to put it in the order you want to tell the story you want. Um, but I, I don't think I was overly stoked with how how that was done. But I'm not a complainer. It's not it's it's not bad by any means. It's just I am a video professional, so I have a higher standard of. I just have a higher standard. I'm more more nitpicky. But like I said, the dodo is not about polished content. It's about the content. It's just about viral content that's super heartwarming and that's what my footage was so that's fine and that's honestly better i'd rather have the cinematic experience live on my youtube channel and then have a dumbed down version of it The cat Bob said, well, look how big one bike, one world got because of the dodo. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with that one, but I'm sure the dodo has catapulted many craters into fame or whatever. Um, Della Rachel said, you have a lot of stamina. I just, when I go up to the land, I have a set amount of time up there, and I just want to get shit done. I I have a never-ending list of to-dos up there, just like anybody that's building a house or renovating a home. It's like the projects don't stop. And so when I get up there, I just, I'm in go mode. I barely eat. I just work all day. I eat one meal. I crash super hard, super early. And then I wake back up and do it all again. Susan Lee said, where's Joey? He is not here this week. He is at my little brother's stepmother's. Jacqueline Heimberg said, your video is better than anything Dodo has ever done. Well, I appreciate that, and I would have to agree with you. I think it's done better because this is what I do for a living, and I knew when I rescued chester to capture every possible thing i could wear a gopro on my head so you can see me holding him put a gopro in the car so when i bring him into the car you get that angle like i knew that it was worth capturing and it's no different than everything else i'm doing on the land it's worth capturing correctly to truly let people kind of feel what i felt so i do appreciate that compliment VVY said, people enjoy watching micromanagement projects. Yeah, I love watching people work. I like watching all those tradesman videos, like I said, and try and learn some little things that I can use in the future when I build. One Bike, One World is about Dean Nicholson, who was traveling around the world on his bike and found his kitten Nala in Bosnia, said Laura Bishop. That's cool. I'll have to look into that. I really want to travel to Istanbul, Turkey. Because there's cats everywhere. But I feel like I would feel obligated to bring one home <laughs> or numerous home. But that's one of my favorite things, traveling. I mean, I don't like seeing stray cats because I feel bad for them, but I love cat encounters. Like when I was in Portugal, I fed so many strays and just glorious little street rat cats. Pula said, how long does it take to get to the land from home? Roughly an hour. Which is not a long drive for me. I used to live in California. An hour, to me, is the equivalent of a 20-minute drive to a normal person. Greg Bowman, thanks for the $5 donation, brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> I always like... Because I feel like so many women follow me on here, which I'm so stoked about. I always love seeing a, a cat, a fellow cat dads and cat guys or just people that like what I'm doing. And all, obviously all the cat mamas. But I'm like, every time I see a guy on here, I'm like, oh my God, it's a guy. 
In fact, let's look up the analytics, because I'm sure you guys will be curious to know of my viewers. I can get all the info on age range, demographic, where they're from. Let's see. So let's go to audience. Um, where are we? So does anyone want to guess what percent of viewers are from the United States? I'll give you a couple seconds. Out of 100%. Guess how many percent? All right. No one's guessing. Fair enough. 59.6%. Uh, so you weren't far off the hitman. Coming in second is Canada with 6%. Coming in third is the United Kingdom with 5.8%. Fourth is Australia, my down under mites, at 26 And then fifth is India, 1.8. Shout out to my Indian viewers. That's dope. I'm like, that's super cool to me. And then after that, it goes Germany, Indonesia, Philippines, Sweden, New Zealand, Malaysia, Netherlands, France, Russia, South Africa, Bangladesh, Singapore, Italy, Japan, Poland, Spain, Denmark, Ireland, Switzerland, Turkey, Austria, Romania, Thailand, Vietnam, Norway, Finland, Mexico, Pakistan. I won't go any longer, but yeah, that's cool to see all the different countries that people are watching this channel. That's actually like super humbling, to be honest. All right. Viewer gender. Here we go. Who wants to guess the, the ratio, female to male, percent wise? Get your guesses out. Hitman says 70% women. AMS says 75. 80, it just keeps going up. I'm a chick magnet, huh? <laughs> oh, Jacqueline with the win. 67.1%. Jacqueline wins that one. 67% female, 32%, 32.8% male, 0.2% user specified. So probably people that just haven't filled that information in. All right, now we're going to go to age demographic. All right, I'm trying to figure out how I do this. Okay, this is what we'll do. Oh, actually, they're, okay. Now they're listed in order. I can't do this. All right, well, I was gonna let you guys guess what age demographic is my biggest supporter. I'll list them off. These are all the different demographics. You guys can guess which one's the largest viewership. 13 to 17 year olds, 18 to 24, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, 45 to 54, 55 to 64, or 65 plus. All right, we got 35 to 44. Puya's saying, I'll just throw yours into the 55 to 64. Okay, so it seems like majority of people think the 30s to 40s or 40s to 50s we are coming in with a whopping 30% of viewers for the highest on the leaderboard at 65 plus. Respect to my elders. I do appreciate all of you. You guys are awesome. Um, coming in second place. It's funny because literally the way I listed them from 13 years old all the way up to 65 plus, it's the exact order of viewership. The younger they get, the less they watch my channel, which is kind of funny. But honestly, I'm kind of thankful for that because it's usually young kids and little shitbirds that are the trolls. And I have a nice adult audience that's respectful and appreciative of what I do. So I thank you. So yeah, coming in second is 55 to 64-year-olds. That accounts for 25% of my views. In third place, it's 45 to 54. That accounts for 16% of my views. In 35 to 44-year-olds, that accounts for 10.8% of my views. 25 to 34 years old is 10% of my views. 18 to 24 is 6% of views. And 13 to 17-year-olds is 0.6%, probably because I 
mark my videos as not made for kids when I upload them because I think YouTube has different monetization standards if they are made for kids. And yeah, everyone that is saying they're old right now, I know you're all young at heart and I'll be there someday too. I'm, I totally relate to that. So that's some cool YouTube analytics for you. Figure you guys could appreciate that. Frank said, I'm 62. We look at you and think about what we could have done. I think that's just the human condition, quite honestly. I think that's just aging. I mean, I have a half-brother who's 17. He just turned 17, and he's kicking ass. He's going to the gym. He's working out. He's getting strong and buff. He's saving money. He's working hard. And I'm like, I fucking wish I was that diligent when I was a kid. Like, I worked hard, but... I've never been good at saving money. I've always spent money on bullshit. If I started saving like he did, like he is now at his age, I'd have a house today easy. Um, and the same thing with the gym. Like I'm a skinny ectomorph and I can get very muscular and my body to weight ratio is very good. Like I can bang out pull-ups. I can climb up walls, trees, all that stuff. But when you're at that age, 17 years old, You've got so much hormones and testosterone, and it's a good time to build muscle because it stays with you. So there's grass is greener. It's like anything. As we age, we we see younger people, and we definitely get a sense of shoulda, woulda, coulda. So with that being said, I will do my best to make you guys proud and try and do right by myself. Rita said, I find myself wishing I'd met someone like you when I was younger so I could have embarked on a fun journey. I'm humbled and flattered, Rita. Well, luckily, you can still enjoy some adventures from the coziness of your house for my YouTube channel. Mm -mm -mm. Being kind is most important, in my opinion. I totally agree, and I've always had a deep sense of empathy and compassion for people. I feel like I'm very, I've always been, I don't know what the word is, just compelled and kind of mesmerized by how many different human beings that are on this planet, and we're all so consumed by our own personal problems, and it's just like... We're all on a floating ball in the middle of space, and it's humbling. And I'm just so curious about the human condition, because everyone is living such vastly different lives with so many different experiences that shape who they are. Like when I travel, I see random people, and I'm like, I just wish I could go talk to that person and go hang out with them for the night and crash at their house and have dinner and just hear their stories and not have them think I'm a serial killer and or vice versa. But it's just, yeah, it's it's a weird thing in life. It's a very weird thing. They said, my oldest kid is 45 and just bought a house last year. You're fine. I know I'm fine. It's tough in today's day and age because you see so many young people that are hyper successful using the internet or whatever they do, and making all sorts of money. But it, like I said before, the grass is greener. I mean, I may not be rich in financial wealth but i'm rich in life and life's experiences i've experienced far more than i would say many people experience in their entire lives between my traveling my exploring abandoned places um my work you know i've traveled and worked for so many different incredible people both in the motorsports industry and outside of it um and that's the kind of shit that in my opinion life is all about like I could bust my ass and slave away and save up tons of money, but I could, you know, you could die at any point. And what good is that going to do you? So I think what I've discovered, and it seems to be, I think a truism is balance truly is everything. You have to find a balance in life of enjoying your time, spending time with your family, your friends, being in nature. 
and also have to be cognizant that one day you will be old and you won't want to work. So you do need to be smart financially and be willing to work for both what your dreams are and for money. Um, Because there's far too many people that want, 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 but they are not willing to put in any work. And it's like, in my experience, if you really want something and you bust your ass hard enough and you put your mind to it, you will make it happen. Just like I'm going to do with this land. I will build a house. I will have a cat castle. I will have a pet raccoon. I will have a dirt bike track. I will have a teepee sauna. I will have an outhouse. I will have a shooting range. And I will have so much more. One day I'll have a side-by-side. So I can load all my buddies up in and go rip around on the trails. But for now I'm just enjoying the moment. And trying to live with some balance. So. I think that's a a good note to end this live on. Oh, don't, I, I'm all for Jesus, but don't spam my chat with repent, please. I will block your ass. How many people do we have in the chat tonight, Della asked? 94 right now. Yeah, come up to my, my lane. I'll make your ass repent. <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to call it everybody. For everybody that's returning countless times, I, I feel like I should shout out your names, but then if I leave one of you out, somebody will feel bad, and I don't want anyone to feel bad. But all the people that I see in here week after week, I really do appreciate you, and that's not lost on me. Um, the people that appreciate my channel, that love my kitties, that love what I'm doing, I love you for appreciating my endeavors and my journey. And... Um, we're just getting started here. This is literally the beginning. This is where we just started year two of Otter Camp. And um, yeah, it's going to go good. Tammy said, you know within your heart, hey, don't leave me out. My question, please. Tammy, what's your question? I got to take Tammy's question. She's one of my OG supporters. We've even talked on the phone before. She's got a ton of cats. Sharon said, you're one of the most interesting people I've ever seen. Well, thanks, Sharon. That's really nice. Hitman said he's heading to the toilet to repent. Amen, brother. <laughs> Tammy, what's the question? I'm going to scroll up and see if I missed it. Sorry, I keep getting sent back down. You know, I, w I, do, have to, oh, I do have to say that every time I come on these lives... Not that I wasn't feeling good before, but I always feel really good after doing this. And I just wanted to thank you guys for that, too. It's just nice to talk to everyone that are supportive and wise. Tammy said, do you snore in the cats? I don't snore. Sometimes I've snored, but I don't think I do anymore now that I stopped smoking and my nasal passage is clear. Chester has very minuscule snores, which you can hear once in a while. They're so cute. I've tried to capture them, but... I have to put my phone super close to record them, and when I get it super close, he senses me, and he wakes up. And with that being said, I'm going to call it. Wishing everyone the best, sending all your families the best, all your kitties. Give your kitties a smooch, a hug. Let's give Chester one last smoochy smooch. Oh, look at him. He's just a snuggly little bug. Yeah. Get lost in his fur. Mm, mm, mm. This is the little dude that started it all. Night, everybody. Love you guys. Peace.